For our next group of inductees, I ask Aquinas seniors Braden Lennox and Gia Rosado to come up here, along with the Lind family. <laughs> the entire family, you're all not getting out of this. <laughs> Good morning. Ed and Kathy Lynn have devoted their lives to their family and Catholic education. As a family, the Lynns firmly believe in Aquinas and the foundation, foundational values of goodness, discipline, and knowledge, which are instilled here. This belief extended to their children. To honor their family's Aquinas legacy, they established two full tuition scholarships to a deserving young man and woman for their senior year. The Lynns are proof of the values and spirit that Aquinas lives through the generations. Edward J. Lynn graduated from Aquinas in 1952. While at Aquinas, he was involved in solidarity, in intramural sports, and the Aquinas Mission Bouts. Kathleen L. Lynn was the first female chair of the Aquinas Board of Trustees. During her term, the decision to render Aquinas as a co-educational school was made. In 1994, Kathy was the first woman to be voted into the Aquinas Hall of Fame. Son Kevin P. Lind graduated in 1980 and served as band president at Aquinas and won array, an, an array of public speaking awards. Sadly, Kevin passed away in 2003. Daughter Kathleen A. Lind graduated from St. Agnes in 1981, the year before Aquinas went co ed. Son Edward J. Lind III was a 1983 graduate and was Aquinas class valedictorian and a member of both the jazz band and marching band. His wife, Lisa McLaughlin Lynn, graduated in 1985 and was a member of the marching band and worked on the yearbook as well as the maroon and white. Daughter, Maureen Lynn Marsh, transferred to Aquinas the year it became co-ed and graduated in 1985. She was a varsity cheerleader and also worked on student recruitment in the yearbook. Son, Matthew F. Lynn, was a 1987 graduate and played basketball and soccer. Son, Brian T. Lynn, graduated in 1989 and played soccer and tennis. Grandchild, Keith E. Lynn, graduated in 2017. He served as president of the National Honor Society and is a member of Permanent St. Thomas Club. Grandchild, Angelina Lynn, a 2019 graduate, was a member of the varsity cheerleading team all four years at Aquinas and served as a school ambassador and peer minister. I am proud to present the Lynn family, Aquinas Hall of, F Hall of Fame inductees for family. Um, thank you very much. You've made this accommodation for me here. As you can tell, I don't uh, do stairs and I don't run track. And I want to, it is still morning, right? Yeah, I thought so. Um, and it is a good morning for us. In the light of the newscasts and watching the devastation that has occurred in parts of our country, uh, we should be very grateful. We don't have a storm surge. We don't have a tree falling on Aquinas or my house. Um, we don't have any kind of devastation to deal with, such as our poor people in the southern part of our country are doing. So I ask you to keep them in your prayers, um, that God will give them um, courage <laughs> and strength uh, to deal with what they have and to get themselves back to some kind of normalcy fairly soon. Okay, that's the serious part. Uh, now I have to tell you, when I first came into the Aquinas family in 1970-something or other, um, there was on our faculty a Brazilian priest, Father Miller, who was an English teacher and also kind of coached public speaking. <clears throat> and he brought me in here, this very auditorium, and said to me, now Kathleen, um, I have a feeling you're going to be making some speeches occasionally from here. I said, okay, Father, yes. Uh, he said, now the thing you have to learn is you need to project. I said, okay, yes, Father. 
He said, do you know what I mean when I say project? I said, yes, Father, I do. He said, what do I mean? He said, can you explain that to me in words? I said, I could, but you know, I really prefer to hear words like that right straight from your mouth because you are the voice of experience. <laughs> yeah. So um, he said, it means that I am sitting, if I sit in the back row of this auditorium and you are speaking up here, I should be able to hear every word you say with or without a microphone. I said, well, all right, that's a challenge. So I did my, he went back there, sat down peacefully, and um, I proceeded. I don't even know what I said. I said something. And uh, then I looked at him. I said, oh, father, 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 is that, is that good enough? Not a word. Not a word came back. I said, what am I doing up here like an idiot shouting like this? So I walked all the way up the aisle and went back to him. He was still sitting right where I saw him with his eyes closed tightly. He had forgotten to put in his hearing aids. <laughs> so I guess I passed that test the first time. Um, but now to the business at hand. Um, when my son, Edward, here we are, uh, was getting his speech ready for his uh, presentation as valedictorian in the class of 1983, he was um, open to so many words of advice about speech making, and, um, and I was glad to offer them. And I said to them very briefly, um, well, Eddie, I tell you, first of all, make it kind of light, you know, and um, make it pleasant for them to listen to. But the most important thing of all, make it short. And he said, okay, and he did. So I'm gonna take a lesson from son to mother, and I'm going to try to keep mine fairly short also. Uh, my family is just awed <laughs> by this uh, wonderful celebration, which is, I guess, certainly to thank us and to, and to honor us for our continuing interest in this school and whatever actions or contributions we've made to it over the years. It is a, a remarkable, wonderful place. Uh, and we are only too happy to be a part of it still being here. Uh, now, we're only one of several families who have been honored in this way, by the way. And uh, we're glad to have the Lynn name added to the list. Um, to the people who planned and participated in this day, we're giving you heartfelt thanks. I know it's a lot of work. And first of all, I need to thank a very dear man. He is dear to us when he was here on our, our faculty. Um, he was dear to us after he retired. He was dear to us when he came back to visit. And he's very dear to me whenever I'm with him and talking to him. I think, Mo, his most outstanding quality would be his persistence in getting things done when he thinks they need to be done. I'm talking about Mr. Ray Manusak. Um <laughs> He's a doll. I, I, think, I think I'm telling you, if, if I had substituted my name for Kamala, I think we might have had a shot at it if he was in charge of my campaign. He just never gave up wanting us to be part of this, this ceremony, and, and I thank him for that. Thank you, Ray. Um, and then, of course, there are two wonderful meters and greeters here. Uh, smiles on their faces, they've taken us over and showed us where to sit, when to sit, how to get up, where the ladies' room is, and the men's room, excuse me. Um, and we are very grateful to them for taking charge of us today. Um, and coincidentally, I, I couldn't really hear it all behind your, them, these two young people, one, Argia Rosada and Braden Lennox, are the two students who received um, our two major scholarships this year. Um, and that covers their tuition and their expenses for their senior year. And yeah. And I will say that uh, after meeting them and talking with them, they are both very well chosen and perfect examples of what we want all of our acquired students to be. 
and I want to thank their families for entrusting your precious children to us. By the way, the most wonderful part about this is both sets of parents, mom and dad, both sets are graduates of Aquinas. I think that is just phenomenal. It's a gift that they've given back to us. And thank you for entrusting them to us. And then, of course, I wouldn't be uh, doing a good job if I didn't mention in a special way my, uh, well, I call him my Aquinas sweetheart. Um, he was always looking out for me. He shows his support and his af affection in so many ways to me, always there when I call on the telephone. If, he, if, I'm not, if he's not there, five minutes later, he's at my door. Um, and that person is Mr. Joseph B. Knapp, or Joby to most of us. I consider Joby like one of my own sons. Um, as a matter of fact, when he was very much younger, uh, and just a little tot, although it's hard to imagine him ever little, but when he did, I loved him then, and I said, if anything ever happens to him to change the course of his life, I, I will adopt him. I'll take him. I'll take him right into my house. And you know what? I still feel that way. I would adopt him today. And of course, I'd be much better off because I think he's potty trained now. <laughs> well, anyway, there is probably going to be a sigh of relief right now as I say, finally, I heard you in the back. <laughs> my husband, Ed, class of 52, and I thank you, our Aquinas family, wherever you all are now, for giving us the opportunity to make an investment which, believe me, will always, always top the list in our portfolio because it offers us the best dividends possible. Those dividends are the education of our young people to attend a place of excellent academics and, more importantly, in an atmosphere of values and spirituality. And that latter term, spiritu spirituality, is known to me at this age as traditional Catholicism. Our need, as you look at our church, state, and government, our need is great. And the places to put those young people seems to get fewer all the time. So thank God that Aquinas is one of the survivors. So to you, all of you gathered here and our fellow honorees, um, and hundreds, I guess, just hundreds of outstanding alumni like you, um, we are thanking you for helping to keep Aquinas alive and well. And while I certainly am not a graduate of the school, I, I regret it, <laughs> I am delighted to have um, played a, a part in the preservation of the school by opening our doors to our wonderful young women students. So when you leave this venerable institution, still on Dewey Avenue, still here, uh, I ask you to reflect and uh, in gratitude, do whatever you can, whenever you can, to keep the words of that alma mater ringing true. And those words are Aquinas evermore.